listening to a tape recording on the standard Unicorder 89, a very strange, wind dry railroad tape recorder. Come with me just a little bit back in time to show you some of the things that are on the inside of the recorder when I was working on this crazy recorder, and then come back to the present where I will show you operation. An interesting unit I got on eBay, a standard reel-to-reel -reel portable tape recorder that is surprisingly well made for being a rim drive recorder. It uses a belt to drive here to a small flywheel, but as you can see the original spring belt is broken and completely rusted completely rusted which is crazy so we're going to have to remove the old spring belt from it and we'll be replacing it with a rubber belt instead this is one of the few times I've ever seen a rim drive reel to reel that is AC bias. Being rim drive, the speed is a 6.7 centimeters per second, which is somewhere between 1 and 7 eighths and 3 and 3 fourths, plus or minus 30%. Here's what the other side of the mechanism looks like. Boom! Rim drive, of course. I'm going to be cleaning the heads. Pretty neat looking. I really like the way this metal looks. I'm amazed by the precision of this thing. Well, you're scaring me. <laughs> I'll pass. No, come see. Come see. Everything is machined so precisely in this. Yet it's rim drive. Of course, that was one of the things that attracted me to this recorder was honestly the fact that it is rim drive, except the build quality in it is unusual for rim drive. And it's AC bias. AC bias. And anyway, I just think that's quite interesting. I mean, the build quality in this is surprisingly good for rim drive. It makes me think the cost of the mechanism would probably be comparable to that of a capstan drive. But it's rim drive, which makes me think they chose rim drive for a reason. I'm just wondering why. I got the mechanism back together. I got a modern rubber square belt a round one would have been better but I didn't have a round one that was the right size uh, I got a square belt on there and it's working fine with the square belt I flipped the this thing around so the rubber contacts this part for rewind the rewind isn't the strongest in the world but it does kind of work and the playback is your rim drive unfortunately there's a spot right here where it had been left in a position in the past. Um, so every time it passes that spot, there's kind of a jump. The speed kind of goes like, kind of just bumps a little bit. Unfortunately, I took the circuit board off because I'm going to check the capacitors. <laughs> Because I know uh, during recording there's a unwanted high frequency oscillation that happens when the mic is plugged in or maybe just once it receives a signal. So I'm going to check the capacitors on it. Also, notice the speaker here. It has a very interesting textured cone. Uh, shout outs to Speaker Freak 95. Oh.
That textured cone is so unique. I've never seen anything like it before. Extreme Airport. Jordan will understand. The way the lines come out. There's so much so. They don't even come straight out. They go down like that. Oh, and then look at the back of the speaker. SP905. Alnico magnet. 8 ohms. 0.8 watts. 3 holes not the more common four each lead separated out like that what a fascinating speaker i love the speaker in this machine you can see the textured cone also on the other side too oh my gosh i love the speaker in this machine oh jordan's probably freaking mouth watering right now so much wa spit Dripping out of Speaker Freak 95's mouth that he can fill up all the spit in this jar right here. Just to get some good views on the circuit board inside this thing. This is before replacing any parts. It's a six transistor machine. I measured the bias voltage. It's 21 volts AC. 40 kilocycles. <coughs> There's a motor drive with a square belt. I didn't. I did find that sometimes a square belt slips slightly because of its square shape, and the speed changes for a moment and then goes back, which is annoying. But I don't have any round belts that are the right size, so I have to deal with what I have. And I took the battery cover off. I replaced several leaky capacitors. Fixing a problem with the recording where there was some weird high-ish frequency oscillation noise. But here's the thing that really aggravates me about not having any round belts on hand that aren't that are that are the right size. See how that belt is flopping around like mad? That's because it's a square belt in a place where a round belt should be. Of course originally this used a spring belt which was round but a round rubber belt should work too. But all I've got that fits is a square rubber belt and it just flops around and with each flop you get flutter! Ah! You'll need to watch the mechanism in operation. This is for playback or record mode. And rewind. That goes down there. Like that. The little flywheel rocks back and forth, similar to how a double ended motor rocks back and forth in a lot of the cheaper rim drives. It's just interesting to note the fact that this machine. Is as well made as it is, solid metal mechanics, with lots of precision machine parts, yet is rim drive, a lot more torque than your t cheaper rim drives of course, and also AC bias, and if you notice on the mechanism here you'll see it says Copal or Copal, I looked that brand up and it's a Japanese company that made film projectors as well as tape recorders so apparently the mechanism in this machine is manufactured by Copal although I guarantee you the circuitry is by standard probably the outer case design is also standard very interesting is the similarity this has to the Lloyd's rim drive reel to reel tape recorder in the sense of this button assembly button slash switch assembly here is identical to the one used in the Lloyd's Having this arm stretching out to the side, actuating this double switch right here, is also an identical thing seen in the Lloyds. That is very interesting. In case all four buttons are pushed in at the same time and your recorder does not operate, push in the protruding part painted red as indicated arrow in the sketch. They didn't paint it red on mine, but pushing that will release all the keys. Some more looks at the mechanics in this thing. Some beauty shots here. Just 
It's definitely an interesting machine, especially considering its rim drive. But a well built AC bias rim drive. Single speed, i.e., it does not have a pitch control. Here is the original leather case for the recorder. There's some damage from tape in the past. Here's a microphone holder. Notice the vent on this side and the notch on the other. That way you can use the microphone while it's in the cave. A previous owner had left this note taped to the machine new batteries installed May the 6th 1991 use 1.5 volt battery UM2 times 4 ever ready number 635 times 4 or equivalent four standard uni quarter 89 six transistor one divide double track 40 minute recording tape speed 6.7 centimeters per second plus and minus 30 percent clearly this part here was copied straight off of what the thing says on the inside except he probably didn't know what a diode was and put divide I'm gonna try to carefully remove this hello there this is your host I'm gonna be opening up this recorder and measuring out the size of the belt drive and then heading to Ace Hardware to see if I can find a suitable O-ring that will work as a roundabout for this machine. If that's a successful operation, this may be the last recording on this recorder with its crazy fluttery state with a square belt. <laughs> Today's date is the 31st of December 2019. To put it mildly, the year is 2019. And the decade is the 2010th decade that started in 2010. However, in Australia and New Zealand, it's the Roaring 20s 2.0, and the year there is 2020. The world is not only living in two different years simultaneously, but even weirder so, the world is simultaneously living in two different decades. What the freak? Later work while the world lives in two different decades at once, I went to Ace Hardware and got a proper belt. Well, really it's an O-ring, but it was a proper size to go in the Unicorder 89. It's round, cross-sectionally, which is what this thing wants, because the square one was flopping about on the round spindles and causing flutter galore. I'm going to be adding a little round piece of rubber that I have, which was some other O-ring-like thing that was in my late dad's old organizer drawers. Uh, because this little piece here was missing its old rubber and that will that should fix the rewind but I need to glue it in place these blooming screws I can't take off I tried it won't budge and I don't have a wide enough thin enough flat blade screwdriver to fit in there so unscrewing this set screw 
taking the three C clamps on the back of that, I was able to slide the real table itself out and manage to wedge this bloody thing out with the help of removing one of the little brake pieces and I cleaned off where it probably had old rubber that disintegrated in the past I cut this little piece in half because it was too thick and I'm going to be gluing it down on there and with that the rewind should be able to work properly and before I was just manually rewinding the thing because the rewind just wasn't working well okay I got this pane back together I got the rubber glued on there and off center like crazy but it still works and then I had to replace the set screw with another screw because yeah the it got not the screw but the actual thing itself got stripped so I had to put a slightly larger size screw to manage to actually get that thing to hold Murphy's Law was just coming at me from every direction working on this bloody thing so when you rewind it's like that and then I play like that There's one little slight thing there that adds just a tiny bit of back tension to the tape. A little brake looking thing. And the actual brake is there. It moves out of the way when you rewind, goes back when you stop. It moves out of the way when you play, goes back when you stop. And here you can see the mechanism, mechanism of this recorder. It's manufactured by a company called Copal. Searching it, I found that they made film projectors, tape recorders, and even flip digit clocks in Japan. I think they're more of a Japan company in the sense that you don't really see Copal products in the U.S. much. This machine now has a proper round belt as well as fixing of the rewind with the little rubber piece. It is December 31st, 2019, while parts of the world are already in another decade. As you heard earlier, this recorder is rim drive and AC bias and has a surprisingly uh, well-made transport mechanism with lots of precisely machined parts lots of metal and also um, a small flywheel so that there's plenty of torque on the rim drive it's a very interesting recording machine for sure and of course you've already seen a number of things um, you know whenever it's at the other end of the tape where you're getting close to the end of a side your speed is running at almost three and three fourths inches per second pretty close to it just maybe a just a teensy bit under three and three fourths whenever you start a tape on side A at the very beginning if you have a diameter hub this size it will run at almost exactly one and seven eighths if the diameter of the hub is as size as this one, it will be a little bit less than 1 and 7 eighths, being that it is a rim drive machine. But even though it's rim drive, it's AC bias, and judging by the very low amount of background noise in the recordings, I think it's even AC erase, which is unusual, because most rim drive recorders are tend to be cheaper machines and are DC bias, but then again, most rim drive recorders aren't as well made as this one is. This one is oddly well made. Rewind doesn't work so well whenever there's not much tape on here. For some reason this doesn't move as freely as it should whenever it's rewinding, but that's the other recording and
the volume's up all the way. There isn't all that much background noise added to the tape. Anyway, this is a fascinating recorder. Using some special secret technology, we've managed to make the reels magically disappear. Don't ask me how it's done. It's top secret. Can't tell you. But, nevertheless, they're gone. And you can see what the unit looks like without reels. Here's Rewind, which does have a lot of torque. You can even hear the motor slow down whenever I do that. And then, this is a surprising amount of... It's not moving as easily as one would expect this type of thing to move, for whatever reason. And then, Play. I can set it all the way down, or on the back of this recorder, you'll see there's this odd looking contraption here. It's a little stand so you can place the machine at a slight angle. Quite fun, am I right? Push in the push button one at a time, as far as it will go. Here on the side you can see earphone and microphone inputs. And over here, external source, which is for plugging in 6 volt DC tip positive. Well, the recorder does, of course, use positive ground and PNP germanium transistors. No surprise there. I recapped this machine, all but two electrolytics. Yes, I got a text on a video. Let's show how this delightful piece of equipment records music now that the belt has been replaced. The original microphone this recorder uses is 10 kilo ohm impedance, which is incredible for a dynamic microphone. It has an interesting sound to it, though already with this machine slow speed, and its pre-emphasis being as strong as it is, it will sound really crazy on this recording. This machine also uses automatic level control. The old microphone, for the standard, can go into this pouch here, like this. There's cord coming out through this notch, or its cord can be stowed inside here. Then, it gives you a vented area to speak through. Here's a leather case to this recorder. Standard Unicorder. Very interesting looking case indeed. Genuine leather as well. And this comes up like that to access the reels. We're now using a low impedance microphone, the Sony TC, excuse me, what am I saying? The Sony F96 dynamic microphone with the standard Unicorder 89. Real real tape recorder. Oh yeah, feel it in your bone. And now, with the nice, fancy schmancy, sure, SM57 dynamic microphone, put through a compressor, that is the Symmetrix 528E voice processor, commonly used in video sessions, blah 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 blah. Yeah, I know, that makes me talk different, doesn't it?
standard unicorder A9 real real tape recorder on the other side of the tape where the linear speed was a lot faster than shown earlier. Am I right, yo boon? Oh my gosh. something. Am I right? What a weird recorder this is. Rim drive, AC bias, I believe AC erase as well, and built very well, but it's rim drive. It sounds a lot better whenever the linear velocity is a bit faster, doesn't it? Well, viewers, I hope you enjoyed the video of the standard Unicorder 89 reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder from 1962, rim drive, and AC bias. A strange combination that even uses a governor motor, believe it or not. A standard motor you might find in capstan drive recorders with a mechanism made by Copal and circuitry, undoubtedly, by Standard Radio Corporation. During musical listening, you may have noticed the occasional dimple, so to speak, in the sound, a little blip. The blip was with every 360 degree rotation of the take of reel. That's because the rim itself, uh, the rubber rim that was being driven, had the machine had been left in playback or record position for a year, well, I don't know how long, but for a long period of time by the previous owner with it not running and it had left a dimple on that particular portion of the, excuse me, wheel of the rubber, the rubber on the wheel. Yes, I know, I'm terrible at speaking sometimes, aren't I? This video has been shot during a strange portion in time. When the year when parts of the world, when the world as a whole is experiencing not only two different years simultaneously, but even two different decades simultaneously, the 2010s and the 2020s. For all the Aussie blokes out there, it's 2020, but for me, it's 2019. And yes, I'm fully aware, if you want to get extremely technical, a decade would start at 2021 and end at 2030, or 2011 and end at 29 or uh, 2020. But to most people, decades start at 2010 and so forth, and that's how I like to think of it too. This has been a cassette master production.